Good afternoon. Um, so this talk is going to be a bit technical. And essentially what I would like to do is to update you about what we are doing on neural processing unit design and integration with in-memory compute. So essentially what uh, as industry experiment are divergent needs. What does it mean? From one hand, we would like to achieve very high computational, uh, computational power. On the other side, we would like to consume nearly zero power. Um, be able to manufacture the chip in large volume because uh, we hope that with TinyML hardware solution, we would achieve 100 millions, if not billions, of devices uh, spread on the market. We would like to achieve very high margins, maybe initially close to 100%. On the other side, we would like to minimize the cost of the chip, which means also not necessarily use uh, the latest silicon nodes. So these are a bit contradictory to each other. On the other side, requirements that at least we considered were, in terms of efficiency, go to 100 terop per watt with a compute density of 2.5 in excess terop per square millimeter, and as I said before, to achieve larger scale integration. So here, essentially, this is our focus. Our focus essentially is quite different than the majority of the solutions which are existing. 50% are data flow, only 8% are in-memory compute. So we need to go beyond that. And uh, as you know, transfer data in and out of memory to any hardware accelerator has to, is a, a, a very careful uh, point of design because uh, the hardware accelerator can offer a very high computational power, but then this could be lowered by the efficiency of the transaction with the memory. So we need to hit the memory wall and achieve a very high throughput through, through the network uh, the neural uh, processing unit. On the other side, imagine that we can design binary neural network, one bit weight, one bit activation, multiply and accumulate are essentially SNOR and, P and pop count, so very efficient, low power, low complex, high parallelism, that would be fantastic. We need tools to do that. And our choice is on QKeras because QKeras allows uh, to mix and match the precision that I like with quantization aware training with fractional and integer quantization. So it seems there is already a deep learning framework in this side. Then in memory compute, there are different solutions. One is digital. So imagine that uh, I use a digital memory. It's quite simple to add logic, especially the binary logic. What are the other choices? Analog with mem restores and uh, capacitor-based IMC. Our choice was on the digital one. Why? First of all, 10% of the logic is the extra cost on the static RAM, for example. Secondly, we need static RAM on chip, right? So why not to support computing there? Uh, sec third, uh, are easy to integrate and easy to manufacture. They are actually already mature in any chip. So, uh, they are deterministic in kind of uh, uh, behavior and uh, can, be, can scale uh, easily in, uh, in production. So this guy essentially is our architecture template. Our architecture template is, is based on few components from which derive any test chip, like the one that I'm presenting today. Uh, essentially, there is a string switch. You can configure the string switch in order, string switch in order to support high throughput exchange of information between uh, a number of guys, which are convolutional accelerator, non-convolutional accelerator like non-linearities and so on. 16 bits precision is supported. Then we support uh, uh, digital in-memory compute, a number of tiles, and a number of DMA serves the data transfer in and out the accelerators the pooling units, the activation units, the memory, and, and so on. And this uh, allows us uh, to integrate uh, in-memory compute 32 kilobits each with uh, uh, one terop uh, of computational power. So let's uh, enter a little bit in some of the detail. So binary multiplication, as I said, are very easy to support in hardware. 
So imagine that I have one K feature, 32 kernels. I can process all of them in parallel and then implement the pop count, very easy, and then uh, add the bias 16 bits and quantize back in one bit. So essentially internal accumulators are 16 bits, but in and out operation are essentially binary. Then we need a compiler, otherwise by hand that's a nightmare. So there are essentially four steps in our compiler, uh, which serve the template I was saying before, which is uh, configurable at design time. There is a model converter, we input different type of representation, but then we apply general transform that are so general that we can export in an X. Then uh, you start uh, uh, some optimization. So imagine that I have the topology which is uh, represented by a graph. I can decompose the graph. I can deattach part of it, remerge depending on the transformation, which essentially consider the nature of the architecture template I was saying before. Then obviously the operation need to be buffered, scheduled, and there is a third step which is the output of the C code which is then linked against the runtime library which serves on, uh, on the MCU in order to generate the final executable. This is one of the operations that the compiler uh, does. So imagine that I need uh, to uh, implement a convolution. So I, need, I have a number of kernels, I have the activation tensors. Essentially these are converted thanks to the image to row uh, transform into the compiler in a toplix matrix and this is bought for activations and for uh, weights, and the convolution then in such a way is lowered to a bunch of generalized uh, matrix multiplication. And uh, these are the, the operations that we support in the AMC, so that the weights are stationary in the memory, and we, through the DMA, load the feature in and out after the computation. And these can be implemented feature by feature in different rounds in order to achieve the kernel, comp uh, the, the layer computation. And then there are two different ways to scale furthermore. One is to decompose the weight in sub tensors and then parallelize the, uh, the executions inside the tile memory and then concat the operation at the end. And the other is to use the, uh, the tiles in a, in a pipeline fashion. So the first is chip, which is this guy essentially and is working is composed by a Cortex-M4, 600 megahertz, in 40 nanometer technology. So as I was saying, we don't need the latest uh, uh, deep submicron technology. An half meg of SRAM, um, tensor YDMA, four CNN accelerators, and eight in-memory compute tiles. And then uh, the uh, use cases, demos that we developed spans from anomaly detection, so here you see that the board in action, essentially, and the LED, which are switching, uh, essentially are uh, highlighting the anomalies. Uh, inertial sensors are used to uh, detect the, the vibrations, and then the data, the raw data are passed to the IMC uh, to do the implementation. The MCU essentially is not loaded by any workload. The workload is in the IMC. The keyword spotting, which is a mix of uh, MPU and IMC, because some kernels, depending on the precisions, not everything can be banalized, obviously, is supported by MPU. And then the face present, uh, presence detection is a mix of MPU and IMC mapping. Efficiency. We start from CPU, 16 bits. We go to NPU, 16 bits, 23 times more efficient. Then if the MPU would be binary, three times more. If we move to the AMC, one bit is uh, 10 times more. I, then the last is uh, 2,000, because if we would arrange the activation so that, such that the uh, communication through the memory minimize the activations, these offer an opportunity for other uh, uh, lift uh, in, in efficiency. Performance is up to 800 times, thanks to uh, the massive usage of the binary. So in conclusions, the density that we offer through these chips is between 10, 10 and 100. So 100 or 200 order of magnitude accelerating the NPU. So you can use the NPU, but you have the opportunity also to do SRAM in memory compute. Uh, the efficiency uh, has the requirements in excess than 50 terop per watt. Uh, I would like to uh, mention that we also presented at ISSCC uh, last month uh, 
a, a new chip that we did in 18 nanometer, where SRAM have been uh, upgraded to support not only one bit, but also four bits. In that case, with one bit, we achieved a 300 terop of 300 terop per, uh, per watt with 54 terop per square millimeter. So first of all, uh, thanks for your attention. Essentially, the work was done by Fabrizio Inderli, so I am presenting here on his behalf. He should be here with me, but uh, it was not possible. So please consider his email if you want to know more about it. Uh, he is available to reply. And these are the, the references, including the paper we presented at ISCC, if you want to dig into the things I, I just said. And then thanks for your attention. If you have questions, I'm happy to take them. <laughs>